poisonous to the snake then? Uh, if this snake grabbed me and gave me a full envenomation, which you'll see very soon, I'd be in a lot of trouble without antivenom. Uh, not the most toxic snake we have in Australia, but their yield, the amount of venom this snake can produce, is uh, really intense. So I'll get you to go behind me, guys. Once you sort of set it off, and Jetty, I'll say when. So you can see how big the snake is. It's going to pop a bit of venom, hopefully. Hopefully any second. Just give me no. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> oh no. Uh, this will produce a couple of drops in a second. There we go. Only got the one fang in. Alright, you've got one on your own. Yeah, there's not the other fang didn't go through. That's right. But you can see the bottom of the vial. Yeah. There's still enough venom in that that it does underneath my skin. Uh, and without medical attention and the appropriate first aid, I'd be dead. Yeah, I'm but for a king brown, that's not a really large yield. So for this particular individual, he's never really always given a seed. See the way they bulldog down? He's holding on. Like I can let go of the bar. Yeah. Still hanging on there. So if a snake ever bites you, you've got to like grip it around the head and squeeze and... No, not generally. Generally, these particular species of snake, if they bit you, they might hold on for a second. But most of the time, they're still let go. Wow, okay. uh, but these snakes, particularly in captivity, like, He's happy to hang on for as long as he can. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. You can see there's a ton of venom there. Yeah. Uh, and like it's really even hard to manipulate them off the bar. We give them a little wiggle, give them a little push. Generally they'll let go, if not, we just put them inside there and then yeah, they should let go. Yeah. So I might jump the snake back up there if that's okay. Yeah. Not bad, got a bit out the end. Got a bit out the end. Just put the whole body in, Jetty. Then I'll get you to grab my hook. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yep, Got it? Yep. Done. Water. So when he opens his eyes, you'll see one eyelid goes up, one eyelid goes across. So they're like his hill team goggles. Just slide them under the water. I'm not only that, I'm along here, the little black dots, they're still like sensors. So in very, very murky water, they're like that's actually how they sense their prey. Actually, feel the vibrations going around. It's a bit like whiskers. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, if you want to give him a hold, you just yeah. hold the base of his tail there, and just hold just under his jawbone here. Okay. Look just under his jawbone, a little further along. Okay. Yep. Nice and tightly for me. Got it. Good belt that would have. Hey. Make a good belt. Would have. Desensitized. Actually, they only use a, a lot of the back part and the sides. They won't use a lot of the under part for when they make belts and stuff mm. like that. Um, so in like the industry where they do make that kind of stuff. I don't know why you're so fidgety today. <laughs> so when we cover their eyes, and you may have seen it in documentaries, they'll put a big towel over their head. Um, it just desensitizes them, makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, generally when they are out of the water for a little bit, they can be a bit testy sometimes, so... You are? No, <laughs> he is a little bit creepy. Web feet as well. Yes, exactly. So perfectly adaptively aligned, they'd actually shatter every single tooth. So when we bite down, our teeth sort of clack together, but if a crocodile does it and they're perfectly aligned, it'll actually just shatter all their teeth. No problem. Yeah. Stop. Temperature. Feel the temperature. Cold. Yeah. That's really weird. Isn't it? Drinking bath. Drinking bath. Never hold a bath. Never hold a bath. Um. So they're kept as pets as well in Australia. So a lot of people have them because of their colours. Um, because they are very docile and nice. Um. Because they don't get very big as well. So if you live in the city, instead of having a dog or a cat, you can just have a snake. It does cut your food bill in half as well. So they don't really need to eat the. You know, very popular in America and in um, uh, Asianic countries for pets. They actually overtake in dogs as well. Um, a lot of people make um, 
with a few mini crib scores on them. And there's actually been cases where they have become so protective of their family. So um, usually what they'll do is dig themselves into a chicken coop, dig a nice big okay. burrow, and then they have a multiple supply of food. Where is popular in uh, in America um, and in um, Asianic countries, they come in this nice black and white colour, but they also come in a red and cream colour too. Um, they're very, very cute when they're little, they almost look like little lace monitors. Um, and then when they hit that adult age, they get these nice big jowls on the side, so they're like cheeks. Um, so during the breeding season, they'll go really big, um, and that's how they attract their females. Um, but he's about 15 years old, there's no reason for the shell um, in the wild, um, other than to sort of keep him a little bit more sheltered. Um, but Hugo, he is a, he's 69 years old, he was 70 in September. Weighs 180 kilos and he's a very beautiful boy. Um, so what I'm giving him here is his favourite, he really loves sweet potato. They really react well to um, brightly coloured things. So if you guys have your nice bright songs on there, he might mistake them for maybe some strawberries or raspberries. You might want to have a bit of a taste with them. So I've got some pretty long bits of sweet potato here, so if you want, you can kind of give him a bit of a food. Okay. Good job! You can come over this side with me if you like. Okay. Here, do you want to hold this with me? Here you go, what's this? Ready? <laughs> so he really likes his veggies because he's actually herbivorous, which means that he only eats his fruit and veg. Yeah. So um, a lot of people think that this is like a gum, it's actually not, it's basically like a big plate of bone. He's got a very sharp eye tooth at the front there which helps him to cut off tree roots and stuff. Um, so uh, very easily fingers as well, so that's why I like to make sure that we keep um, a little bit of a distance between the food, our fingers and the tortoise. Yeah, he doesn't have the same um, swallow structure, so he usually <coughs> takes a big breath of air and he'll actually swallow down all of his food. So every now and again they make a big sort of grunt noise. Um, yeah. You hold it, Darce. Just let go before you bite your finger. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Ready? Mm. Yummy! Try it with head out. You've got any food to I'm not going to give you this. Mm. <laughs> no, no, you me. are cruel. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. cruel. So yeah, unfortunately you've had both your bowls today, so I'm not going to give you anything else. So these see. are actually still very young. They will get a little bit taller as well, a little bit bigger too. Um, emus are very uh, one of the world's <laughs> only flightless birds. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> you know. Have to see. Look. Put your hand out. I'll see what that. Look, I got enough for that, mate. <laughs> Darcy, come on, else is doing it. Um, so, emus usually travel in a troop oh, as well, so <laughs> every time you get them, they <laughs> <laughs> um, So, when they do go to rescue facilities on their own, they actually um, go out with chickens and um, ducks as well. Yeah, we like them. Oh, Elsie, you okay? What happened, Darcy? Very easy, man. And um, their feathers are, are loo uh, they don't have the same pigment as normal feathers as well, so that's why they have that sort of story feel. They do have little wings that you can sort of see on the side of them. Very little wings. They're just here. Because they, um, but they're completely they can't fly. No, they're completely useless. That's why they have these nice big strong legs. Um, because they'll defend themselves with that. Um, there have been people that have been kicked by them, broken ribs, broken arms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> hand out just like that and he might come over and have some food from you. Aww. We've got two really big boys as well, Dean and Bruce. They're the uh, main, they're the head of our little We're down there. group. Um, uh, generally they are down there except for the rest so area. Is. Yeah. Not for you. Oh, yeah, cool. Guys, we might head over this way. Might so sometimes they can become a little bit more punk hungry, um, but generally they're very, very friendly and nice. So you can see that we've got two different um, types. We've got the kangaroo island ones and we've oh. got our eastern grey ones as well. Oh, we like that. They know the back means. How do they know what the back means? Well, because they've been here for so long, they know what the bags mean. So they know that it means food. Well, sometimes when people bring their own ones, they bring them in these bags and it's actually not kangaroo food. But kangaroo think it is for the Yeah, yeah. You can have a part of all of them as well, so just have a, some downtime. You love it. <laughs> 
So you can see very, very friendly, two very different dingoes. Pretty won't come down whatsoever. Um, but Adina's very friendly. Um, she loves kids. She loves her, her keepers as well. Um, is she a wolf or a fox? So she's a dingo, a oh, wild dog. So they're a native Australian um, dog found found over near Fraser Island. You can find them distributed. Um, they actually did a, they only recently did a documentary where it was dingoes well, hunting. Like that was a not. really, really good thing they did. Um, but this exhibit only opened about a month and a half ago, so very, very new. You like koala bears, don't you? Hello. Hey! Don't go away! Run off. Huh? That's different. You stay here. Another one. Can you give him a pack if you like? He's just going to sit and have a bit of a sniffle. If you want to see, he might be coming. He's going to hold that in front of his nose. He might be a bit hungry. <laughs> so koalas eat eucalyptusly. It's made up of about 90% water, about 10% anything that they're going to use. Um, oh, oh, well. wow, wow. <laughs> oh, he wants it. So they have those very nice sharp claws. You can also see that he's got two thumbs here, so they're perfectly adapted for the trees. Um, they're a marsupial as well, so they do have a pouch. Um, but when baby's about the size of a guinea pig, they'll actually move on to mum's back. He will run off. He won't. Eh? He will. Where's he gonna go? He's in closure. Oh, he's in closure. Oh, yeah. Is he hungry still? So they actually smell the leaves before they eat them as well. So they actually only eat the best leaves that they can find. The young shoots. Yeah. Don't touch him. Oh, 
Yeah. You're not allowed to pick them up. Oh. Teddy Bear told me feeding him. You've got loads of video of your Darcy, don't worry. Cool. Take it slow down. Yeah.